Hey, hi hey, there, welcome, welcome to, to Analog, Analog Output. Output. This week's with this. Hang on, just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, uh, testing, 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 testing. There. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to Analog Output, and this uh, next module I'm going to build is going to be a little bit different. It's um, it's not a kit, but it's not exactly a scratch build either. I'm going to be taking an existing circuit and sticking it into a Eurorack module with a little bit of modification. I'm going to be using one of these boards. This is not something I build. You can tell by how neatly the uh, surface mount soldering has been done. This is something I bought after I read about it in an Instructable, which is uh, oh, there someplace. And uh, the seller describes it as, this is a quote, a DC 6 to 15 volt PT2399 microphone reverb plate reverberation board, no preamplifier. Okay. Um, how they fit a reverb plate down into this IC, I don't know, but uh, actually the IC is a Princeton Technologies PT2399 um, CMOS echo delay processor chip. And it contains an ADC and a DAC and some memory in between. So it takes, it takes an input analog signal, it digi digitizes it, it um, delays it in memory, and then after the delay it sends it back out again through the DAC, back out to the analog outside world. And um, you know, the rest of the circuitry here sets it up as, as a reverb board. It uh, takes the delayed signal and it mixes it in with the original signal and sends that to the output. It also feeds it back into the delay so it uh, goes around and around again. This knob, this potentiometer, controls the reverb level. That is how much of the delayed signal is mixed into the original signal. I think this board was originally designed for things like karaoke amplifiers, but uh, people have used it to make guitar pedals or, you know, in the case of that, an instructable, a standalone echo reverb box. And uh, it got me thinking, hey, that might be a fun thing to stick into a Eurorack module. So yeah, making a Eurorack re echo reverb module out of one of these things. Spoiler alert, it will not be a great echo reverb module. Uh, it will, however, be a cheap one. That board there, I paid about $3 for it, plus about maybe 50 cents shipping from China. It, the board is made in China. It's uh, sold by a, a Chinese seller on eBay. Uh, generally, with these Chinese eBay sales, the price is very low, and the shipping is very cheap, and then the downsides are, first of all, you don't always know exactly what you're going to be getting. They don't necessarily describe it very fully or sometimes very accurately and you don't necessarily know if it's going to be complete or if it's going to be functioning correctly and you know, the other downside is the shipping can take like a month or more that's assuming it shows up at all i've i've had that problem where it just never arrived so i usually avoid buying stuff on ebay from china at least if it's something I want promptly or something I have kind of a you know an emotional investment in but in this case it was just you know something to play around with and you know if worst came to worst and I ended up with nothing usable and and couldn't get a refund well you know not a disaster I'd be out a small amount of money so I ordered well no I did not order one um, I ordered five Yeah, you know, why not it gives me some uh, extras if you know in case I destroy one in the process of trying to figure out how to get to work or something. Uh, maybe I'll think of some use for um, another board or two. And if not, I can always, you know, sell the extras on eBay, right? So, okay. Let's try this thing out. Okay, we've got this thing set up now. We've got uh, 12 volt power coming in on this power terminal here. We've got our input here and our output here. Uh, these are connected to a couple of jacks there mounted on that board and the input is connected to sound source over there, uh, my laptop playing a sound file, and the output is connected to this 
little speaker here. And that's about all there is to it. I've got the level control turned all the way down. I'm going to turn on power. A little LED comes on. And start playing some sound through it. Turn that up a little bit. Okay, so now if I turn up the level, let's hear what happens. That's turned all the way up and you can hear is very strong reverb going on there. Turn it back down. Okay, that's how it works. So, gives you some reverb for your karaoke pleasure. Now, there is one more parameter of this circuit here. Uh, in addition to the reverb level, which is controlled by this pot here, there's also the reverb time. There's the delay time, the amount of time it spends uh, going through the memory in the, in the chip before getting sent to the output. And that is governed on the PT2399. It's governed by the value of a resistor between, uh, between pin 6 and ground. And on this board here, that is this little surface mount resistor here, R27. Uh, so it's a fixed resistance between pin 6 and ground, so you've got a fixed delay time using this board here. But if you look very carefully at this thing, you see there's three solder pads here and it turns out if you remove R27 and put a resistor or a potentiometer here on these solder pads then they become the new resistance between pin 6 and ground and so if you've got a, a pot there you can have uh, control over the delay time. That delay time has to be at least 2k ohms when you power this thing up or it turns out this chip locks up so if you want really short delay times corresponding to a resistance less than 2k it's possible to do that it will run with with less than 2k it just won't start up with less than 2k so you you can make a little anti-latch circuit that presents a, a high resistance during the first second or so after you apply power and then brings the resistance down to whatever you want but if you don't really care about such short delay times uh, you can just, um, you know, put a 2.2K resistor in series with a potentiometer and you'll be fine. Okay, so the plan is take this, remove R27, add a series resistor and a potentiometer, add a Euro rack power header, connect to some jacks, put it all behind a Euro rack panel, and there we go. Let's do it. Here's what I have so far. I removed R27 by violent means. I actually cut it off with diagonal cutters and I've replaced it with a 50k potentiometer in series with a 2k resistor. Of course I've added a power header here. I need to add input and output jacks uh, but first I have to deal with another issue that I didn't realize until I got to this point that these two boards have a combined length that's too long to fit between the Eurorack rails so I'm going to have to cut some of the perf board off. So I've been looking for jacks and what you'd really like is something that's compatible with these pots in the sense that you want it to be perf board friendly and you want it to line up in this direction with these things so that you can mount them on a flat panel here. Ideally you'd like it to be uh, lined up in this dimension as well. Uh, you'd like them to be threaded so you can mount them on that panel. And um, such jacks don't seem to exist, or at least I haven't found any. So what I'm thinking is, okay, never mind. What I'm going to do is just cut off most of this perf board and use a couple of uh, panel mounted jacks instead. So, more cutting.
Next I worked on the front panel. I printed out some graphics on sticky label paper, sprayed it with some clear paint, took a blank Eurorack panel, cleaned up the edges a little bit with a file, and then stuck the panel down onto the label paper, trimmed up the edges, and applied some CA adhesive on the edges and when that dried sanded it off to make some nice smooth straight edges. So far so good. Next I took it over to the drill press and used a step drill to drill the holes. I think the label paper interfered a little bit with clean drilling there. And next time I do this I think I'll try a couple different ideas I have. It came out okay although a little bit messy. Anyway I mounted the boards to the front panel using the potentiometers and installed the jacks, wired them up. Last thing I did was I took a little scrap of perf board and glued it across the two boards to keep them from flexing when you're turning the knobs and the module's done. Alright, let's give this thing a try. So, this is what I've got running into the module. And I've got the controls turned all the way down and this is what's coming out of the module. About the same thing. And if I turn up the level control start to hear some of the reverb. That's the dry. That's the reverb. We'll turn that up some more. Now we're starting to get some really crazy reverb here. Again, that's the dry. That's the reverb. That's turned all the way up. crazy. Now, how about we turn up the time? Start to get a little bit of a sense of an echo there. Turn it up some more. Definite echo there. could go maximum crazy, turn them both all the way up. And you get some uh, artifacts when you twist the time knob. Something like that. So there that was a fun and cheap project. When I say cheap, I mean the parts total came in somewhere a little under $15. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you maybe got some ideas for a project of your own. And uh, coming up on Analog Output, I'm going to be showing you the PM Foundations Sample and Hold and telling you the long sad story of how that came together. And um, after that I think I'm going to have a couple of drum modules and a ring modulator I'll be working on. 
So, you know, like and subscribe and uh, keep watching Analog Analog Output.